Hola, buenos días y bienvenidos a clase número 6. Hoy vamos a hablar sobre dónde vivimos. Por ejemplo, vivo en Basingstoke. ¿Dónde vives tú? So this is theme one, communicate, and we're now on part two, all about my home, which is divided into four separate lessons. ¿Y qué tal? Estoy bien, pero un poco cansado. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Jamie Robbins. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Tengo 44 años. ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? Mi cumpleaños es el 20 de junio. ¿Y dónde vives? Vivo en Basingstoke. ¿Y tú dónde vives? ¿Y de qué color es el bolígrafo? ¿Es azul o rojo? Sí, es rojo. ¿Y de qué color es este bolígrafo? ¿Es verde o azul? Sí, es azul. ¿Y este bolígrafo es amarillo, negro o verde? Sí, es verde. Y finalmente, este bolígrafo, blanco, negro o azul? Es negro. ¿Y de qué color es el plátano? Amarillo, marrón o rosa? Es amarillo. Y vamos a repasar. Could you have a look at the vocab, please, that we've seen over the last five lessons and just check you know what all those words mean, ¿ok? En dos minutos, por favor. Y listos en cinco, cuatro, tres, dos y uno. Vamos, lunes, Monday, febrero, February, domingo, Sunday. Vivo en Los Ángeles. I live in Los Angeles. Mi cumpleaños es el 2 de marzo. My birthday is the second is on the 2nd of March. Rojo, red, verde, green. Tengo 10 años. I'm 10. Me llamo Bea. I'm called uh, Beatrice. Vamos a aprender. Let's learn or we are going to learn. Vamos a continuar. Let's continue or we are going to continue. Amarillo, yellow. Martes, Tuesday. Tengo los ojos marrones. I have brown eyes. Nací en. I was born in. Mi apellido es. My surname is. Me gusta. I like. Me gustaría. I would like. Y ahora vamos a traducir el texto al inglés. ¿Vale? En dos minutos, por favor. Y listos en cinco, cuatro, tres, dos. Uno. Hello, good evening or good afternoon. I'm called Luca and I'm quite well today. My surname is Estrella, which actually means star. I like my name because it is different. I live in Paris in France, but I was born in Burgos in the north of Spain. I'm 20 years old and I was born in 2000. My birthday is on the 15th of January. I have green eyes and short black hair. In my free time, I like playing basketball and listening to rock music. See you later. Y señor Robbins, ¿dónde vives? Vivo en Basingstoke. Vivo en Basingstoke. Vivo en Inglaterra. Vivo en Inglaterra. ¿Dónde vives? ¿En Londres? ¿En Irlanda o Irlanda del Norte? ¿En Gales? ¿En Escocia? Por ejemplo, Edimburgo. ¿En España? ¿O en América? ¿América del Norte? 
los Estados Unidos. ¿Dónde vives? Vale. What I'd like you to do is to interpret what I say, please. So if I say to you, vivo en Londres, I just want you to say out loud, I live in London. Ok, vamos. Vivo en Escocia. I live in Scotland. Vivo en España. I live in Spain. Vivo en Irlanda del Norte. I live in Northern Ireland. Vivo en Londres. I live in London. Vivo en los Estados Unidos. I live in the United States. Vivo en Gales. I live in Wales. And the other way around this time, please. So, I live in Spain. Vivo en España. I live in London. Vivo en Londres. I live in Scotland. Vivo en Escocia. Where do you live? ¿Dónde vives? I live in Wales. Vivo en Gales. Cuestión número 2. ¿Vives en una casa o un piso? ¿Vives en una casa o un piso? Una casa o un piso. Señor Robbins, ¿dónde vives? Pues vivo en un piso. ¿Y tú? ¿Dónde vives? ¿Y cómo es? ¿Cómo es? Por ejemplo, ¿es una casa moderna o vieja? Es una casa moderna. Es una casa moderna o vieja. Es una casa vieja. Es una casa grande o pequeña. Es una casa grande. Es muy grande o bastante grande. Es una casa muy grande. Y finalmente, ¿es una casa bonita o fea? En mi opinión, es una casa bonita y bastante pequeña. ¿Y dónde vives? ¿Cómo es? ¿Y es un piso moderno o viejo? Es un piso moderno. Es un piso moderno o viejo. Es un piso viejo. ¿Y es un piso pequeño o grande? Pues es un bloque de pisos. Es grande. ¿Es un bloque de pisos bonito o feo? Pues, en mi opinión, es un bloque feo. Y, señor Robbins, ¿dónde vives? ¿Y vives en una casa o un piso? ¿Y cómo es? Vivo en Basingstoke, en el sur de Inglaterra, en un bloque de pisos grande y moderno. Mi piso es bastante bonito, pero pequeño. Vamos a traducir la frase al inglés. Listos en 3, 2, 1. I live in Basingstoke, in the south of England, in a block of flats, big and modern. Ok, let's change our word order in English. In a big and modern block of flats. My flat is quite pretty, or nice, but small. Right, before we launch into a listening activity, um, I've just displayed some vocab for you, so an opportune moment to take a screenshot of that. Uh, you have already seen most of this. There are a few extras in there. For example, vivo en Fleet. Uh, I live in Fleet, we know that. Desde hace cinco años. So it says how long you've lived there for, so since, or for five years. Um, una casa adosada, a semi-detached house, makes sense, look, because it's got the number two in it. Dos and semi-detached house, one next to the other, two of them. 
una casa en hilera for a terraced house, una casa independiente for a detached house, makes sense, doesn't it? Independent, on its own. Una granja for a farm, un chalet, uh, two different spellings. Uh, it really depends on where you come from and speak Spanish. And um, you could even say, uh, and some people say, un bungalow uh, as well. So for this listening task, um, we have three people talking and there are three columns for you to fill out. Quite happy for you to do it in either Spanish or English or both if you can. And for column one, you're going to mention something about the past, en el pasado. Column two, ahora, de momento. Ahora means now or de momento at the moment. So something about where people live now. And then finally, en el futuro, something to do with the future. Okay? Okay, eyes down and make your notes in English or Spanish or both, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay? Row one, here we go. Pues en el pasado yo vivía en una casa pequeña en Londres. Pero ahora vivo en un piso grande en Manchester. En el futuro me gustaría vivir en una casa enorme en Edimburgo. Repito, pues en el pasado yo vivía en una casa pequeña en Londres, pero ahora vivo en un piso grande en Manchester. En el futuro me gustaría vivir en una casa enorme en Edimburgo. Ok, row 2. Bueno, antes en el pasado yo vivía en una granja en el campo de Hampshire. Pero ahora vivo en una casa adosada en el centro de Londres. En el futuro me gustaría vivir en una casa independiente en la Costa del Sol en España. Repito. Bueno, antes, en el pasado, yo vivía en una granja en el campo de Hampshire. Pero ahora vivo en una casa adosada en el centro de Londres. En el futuro, me gustaría vivir en una casa independiente en la Costa del Sol en España. Y finalmente, número 3. Hace muchos años, cuando tenía ocho años, yo vivía en Irlanda en un bloque de pisos grande. Hoy en día tengo una casa bastante pequeña y bonita en las afueras de Londres. Sin embargo, un día en el futuro me gustaría vivir en una casa lujosa en el norte de Francia en la costa, porque hablo francés y adoro la cultura francesa. Repito, hace muchos años, cuando tenía ocho años, yo vivía en Irlanda en un bloque de pisos grande. Hoy en día tengo una casa bastante pequeña y bonita en las afueras de Londres. Sin embargo, un día en el futuro me gustaría vivir en una casa lujosa en el norte de Francia en la costa porque hablo francés y adoro la cultura francesa. Vale, listos en 3, 2 y 1. Ok, so I've got the answers written out for you. That is exactly what I read out to you. Let's have a look through and, uh, through and see how you've done. Uh, there was a lot more language there than we've been used to in previous listenings. That's not a problem. You're just listening out for gist, but of course, if you get more information, that's fantastic. So, row one. In the past, we have this person saying they lived in a small house in London. Now, they live in a big flat in Manchester. And in the future, they'd like to live in an enormous house in Edinburgh. And row two, they say, uh, well, before, in the past, I lived in uh, on a farm in the countryside, new word, El Campo, uh, in the countryside of Hampshire. But now I live in a semi-detached house in the centre of London. Much easier when you see it written. 
In the future, I'd like to live in uh, a detached house on the Costa del Sol in Spain. And stay with me, row three. Many years ago, when I was eight, I used to live in Ireland in a big block of flats. Nowadays, we know the word oi today, dia day. Nowadays, I have a, right, I've got to be careful here, house quite small and pretty. So, a quite small and pretty house in the outskirts or the, the suburbs of London. However, or nevertheless, one day in the future, I would like to live in a house, and they describe this as Lujosa, which is a luxury house, in the north of France, on the coast, and they give a reason, and they say, because I speak French, and I love the French culture. Okay, I hope you did all right with that, and you're still with me. Let's move on. Mali. Uh, translation task for you. So using the same script we've just been working with, could I ask you please, you see I'm getting much politer now, aren't I? Could I please ask you to translate these sentences into Spanish? Make sure you do all of them though. Uh, I'll come back to you in, shall we say about 10 minutes? Okay, in, in video time that's going to be like 30 seconds. See you shortly. Muy buena suerte. Y las respuestas en 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, I'm just going to leave the answers up for you on the screen for you to check against your own. If you've got any questions, of course, you can uh, send me a message and I will happily answer those for you. Okay, off you go. Y ahora vamos a responder a las cuestiones en español. Vamos a hablar en español. Por ejemplo, en el pasado vivía en una casa muy grande en Plymouth. Pero ahora vivo en un bloque de pisos moderno en Basingstoke. En el futuro me gustaría vivir en Winchester en una casa muy grande, lujosa y moderna. ¿Y tú? Right, before we get to the last activity of the lesson, I just want to do a quick spot check with vocab. Quite simply, I'm going to read out uh, a word in Spanish. You need to say the corresponding English meaning before I get there. You need to do it before me, otherwise, you know, you're letting yourself down, your family down, your pets down. So be quick. Ready? Una granja. A farm. Una casa. A house. Un piso. A flat. It's done for you. Una casa adosada. A semi-detached house. Vivo en. I live in. Un chalet. Bungalow. It's done for you. Una casa pequeña. A small house. Una casa grande. A big house. Una casa independiente. A detached house. Muy bien. Right, language learners, we're going to get our grammar geek on a little bit, love a bit of grammar. And we haven't done much yet so far uh, in our six lessons. We're going to look at nouns and we're going to look at gender in particular. Um, looking at the word a or some, posh word to describe the word a, this is an indefinite article. We'll come back to that when we see the word the. But for now, focus on a and some. You've already been using it a lot. For example, today you said vivo en un piso. I live in a flat or vivo en una casa. So nouns have a gender. The word flat is actually masculine, whereas the word house is feminine. Um, you might think that's a bit odd. In English, we don't really do it much, apart from sometimes people refer to beautiful um, feats of engineering as she. For example, a ship described as how, how she is beautiful. Sometimes people refer to a car as she. Um, not really a formal thing in English, but it is formal in many languages, such as Spanish. So how do you know if a noun is actually masculine or feminine? Well, first of all, you can look in a dictionary and it will tell you after the word, whether it's masculine, it will say M in brackets or feminine, F. It will also tell you if a noun is plural with the letters PL for plural. But more than that, if the word begins with UN, A, this refers to masculine nouns. So for example, UN PISO, a flat. Also, if a noun ends in an O, it is highly likely that it is also going to be masculine. Not all the time, but most of the time. Um, una, casa, this is feminine noun, and you can see the pattern of 
the A. Okay, so if a noun ends in an A, it is most of the time going to be feminine. And like I said, you can also find this in the dictionary. So how would I change A flat into some flats? Well, we add an OS to the end of un, unos, some, and now we have the word some flat, so we just simply put an S on the end, unos pisos. Uh, in the feminine form, a house, to say some houses, we add an S to the end of una, and an S to the end of casa, some houses. So for the following nouns, could you please fill in the gaps with either un or una, depending on the ending of that noun. Vale, en tres, dos, uno. Okay, a book, un libro, it's masculine. Bolígrafo, a pen, un bolígrafo, masculine. Uh, you can tell because they end in O's. Planta, una planta, a plant, ends in an A, it's feminine. Piso, ends in an O, un piso, a flat. House, ends in an A. Una casa, a house. Platano, a banana, un. Telefono, ends in an O. Un telefono, a telephone. And number eight is a bit of a trick one. It's actually una clase. Uh, not all nouns end in an O or an A, okay? Some end in different letters. So, for example, E. How would you have been able to work out that that was feminine? Well, look in a dictionary. God, again, bossy, be nearly there. Okay, this time, could you please make these nouns um, plural for me? So I want you to fill in the gap here with either unos or unas, some. And then you need to make the actual nouns plural. So for example, uh, book, we're gonna say unos for some. Oh my goodness, unos for some books. Okay, off you go, vamos, listos, en tres, dos, uno. Okay. Some pens, unos bolígrafos. Some plants, unas plantas. Some flats, unos pisos. My S's are not working today, are they? Some houses, unas casas. They look like fives. Um, bananas, some bananas, unos plátanos. Some telephones, unos teléfonos. And finally, some classes, unas clases. That is it for today, folks. You have been amazing, and don't let anybody tell you any different to that. Our next lesson, lesson seven, we're going to continue the theme of house and home, and we're going to be looking specifically at uh, opinions and justifications. But for now, hasta luego.